пойдем. All right, we're back with a little bit of a lighter fare. Um, girls can't play ball, right? World Series edition. There you go. All right, while the World Series is going on, we wanted to have a second little short baseball story. This one's pretty awesome. It's about Jackie Mitchell. There we go. The girl who struck out Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. And I don't Gehrig. know why. I don't she know why they stopped. She walked Tony Lazari. <laughs> right. There you go. So, Mark, tell us about Jackie. Okay, this is... Um... An interesting story because it involves a uh, guy named uh, Engel and a guy named Clark Griffith, who owned the Washington Senators in the 20s and 30s. Um, and he uh, built a minor league stadium um, to get more people in the stands at the minor league level. It was a, a team called the Chattanooga Lookouts. And the Chattanooga Lookouts, this was uh, Robert Barnes's hometown team was the minor league team for the Washington Senators that fed the Senator chain to uh, DC, where uh, I think Griffith Stadium is still a stadium in DC. It's probably been torn down, but I think that was the Senator's stadium in DC. Um, anyway, so, you know, in the twenties and up until 1929, he, he puts a lot of money into this team and they're getting 15,000 people at a brand new stadium that he builds with the team's owner, this guy, Joe Engel, I think his name was. Yeah. And he um, names it Engel Stadium, which was kind of a good idea. But <laughs> and, and anyway, if you're paying for it. Right. So Engel, the crazy Joe Engel, is always looking for these stunts to put seats in the stands and uh, put people in the seats in the stands. And he has an elephant hunt at one point where people are chasing elephants around the stadium. Um, that is Joe Engel. Yeah, yes, that's yes. earlier on. That's probably like 1905. Well, he's play. He's a player. Yeah, I mean, he, he is a player. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so he one of his stunts is you know they, they do the usual thing midgets, uh, whatever you know free balloons. Uh, um, sure. oh, 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 if you showed up and uh, there was a raffle to give away an entire house, somebody won a house. You know, uh, in the stands. Um, all of this is fine and well until 1929 when the stock market crashes and the depression mm -hmm. happens. Now he's got a brand new stadium um, and he's got problems because the attendance is starting to drop off. So he finds a team that's all girls uh, in, in the South and he signs to a contract this 17 year old cute little girl named Jackie Mitchell. And Jackie Mitchell is a pitcher who I believe her neighbor was a guy named Dazzy Vance. Here's Jackie Mitchell. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's a girl whose neighbor, um, ironically, is a pitcher for the Brooklyn Dodgers named Dazzy Vance. And Dazzy Vance um, teaches her to throw a sinker, which they called a drop ball back then. It's either a sinker or some sort of a fork ball. But the point of the matter is the ball goes along yeah, there's a picture of her. But look at the guy in the back looking at how the ball's dropping, though, whoever that guy is back there. But she, as a lefty, was uh, able to come up with the help of Dazzy Vance, who was also a lefty, to throw this unusual pitch. And um, it was a, a sinker, you know, for better or for worse. And they brought in the Yankees were coming back from spring training. And to keep the players in shape when they were coming from Florida back to New York, they would barnstorm. And the barnstorming involved playing all these crazy teams, House of David, the Sing Sing All-Stars, like we did in the other episode. Sure. Same team. This is the same team. It's 1930. All exhibition type of stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all pickup games or all exhibitions things so, so people can make money. And these things did make money. And it kept the 
major league players in shape, which was the real point of just actually having a game, you know, so they could find opponents all the time in spring training. So they sold out this Engel Stadium. And um, I don't know if we have some video of this. Yeah, we do. Oh, oh let's see what it says. So we'll just roll that same practice. Here we go. This is the actual um, Babe Ruth getting pitched. Oh, yeah, because it says the lookouts out there. You see the sign says lookouts. Yep. This is the Chattanooga lookouts. This is Robert Barnes' hometown team. Yep. <laughs> and here's Jackie Mitchell throwing this, I guess, three-quarter sidearm almost pitch, which is kind of interesting. There was one dropping off the, off the table. Ruth put some spit on his hands, digs in, fouls that one off or went straight back. No, he, he he missed. That was he part missed. of this. He, he, missed. Missed. he right. never even he never hit the bat. Right. It was a cold strike three. That's the third strike. That was a third strike right there. He swung it to, missed the final, struck out. There's Lou Gehrig, who bats next, and he yeah. struck out also. Yep. Okay. And then she so, walked the other guy. She, and she walked uh, uh, Tony Lazari and then was removed from the game. Uh, Clyde Barefoot was the starter in that game, the famous Clyde Barefoot, who was removed by the manager. Obviously, this was all arranged to bring her in in the second inning mm -hmm. um, as part of the stunt. But the reality of it was it wasn't a stunt, that she really could pitch. And she was tired of all the hoopla, retired from baseball, I think at the age of like 25 or something. She quit baseball completely because she didn't want to be a circus freak. And... Um, Later on, it's depicted somewhat in the movie A League of Their Own, uh, which you mm. showed at the beginning. That's, that, that was kind of the league she was in, if that makes any sense. That's where the sure. guy plucks her out of. And it's kind of interesting because I've always felt that girls or women could pitch in the major leagues if they developed a specialty pitch like a knuckleball. I mean, mm. even today, there could be a female knuckleball pitcher. Uh, if, you're in the, if you're in the American League, you wouldn't even have to bat. So, I mean, you could, in theory, have a career as a knuckler. You know, the problem is you can't bat and you can't throw overhand because it, you can't get the velocity that a major league pitcher could get. But if you were able to master the knuckleball, or in this case, a sinker or some sort of a... a um, trick pitch almost. Trick pitch almost, a, a forkball. She was able to do that. And if you were able to master a knuckleball... Uh, you could, in theory, be a pitcher in the Amer in the in the major leagues. The, the problem is you need big hands. The greatest pitchers in the history of the game had the biggest hands mm. of any humans on the face of the earth. If you looked at Sandy Koufax's hands, they were the size of a foot. Or Randy, um, Randy Johnson, or he was or like Clemens. six foot eight or six yeah, yeah, foot yeah. seven, yeah. and just. But I'm saying yeah, even yeah. even shorter guys who were great pitchers had huge hands, and that allows them mm. to to snap the ball, to throw a curve, to throw a fastball, to wrap your hands around the surface of the thing. So women having smaller hands are at a disadvantage right out of the chute. But again, if you develop a, a knuckler, even a knuckler needs big fingers, I think, because um, you need the fingers to go behind the baseball to push it forward. But anyway, so she did it. I mean, I, I, God bless her. I don't know how uh, she did it other than this guy, uh, Dazzy Vance, the legendary Hall of Fame pitcher for the Brooklyn Dodgers, um, taught her that pitch, and he was her neighbor. Just by now, There is a little bit of a pushback on it that the game was scheduled for April 1st, mm -hmm. but was rained out. So there were some saying that it was possibly a publicity stunt. It was definitely a publicity stunt, but that doesn't mean it was rigged. I mean, you know what I mean? Like this, this was a publicity stunt. It was to put seats in the as people in the seats. That doesn't mean that it didn't happen correctly as seen. You know, I've heard that too, but no one's proven it or disproven it either way. She did have that pitch. She was a dominant pitcher of her era. This was not a, you know, a, a fluke. You know, that's what she was doing. Okay. Perfect. I don't think I don't think Ruth and Garrick just struck out on purpose. You know, oh, what and I mean? that's what some people push back too, saying that there was no way that Garrick I mean, would let Ruth strike out and not get a hit just to rub it in later. Right, and and also, I mean, Ruth made so many disparaging remarks about women right afterwards that even the New York Times in 1931 castigated him for being a misogynist in print. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, uh, even the New York Times back then was not going to allow it to happen. So. Uh, Ruth said, you know, there's no way girls can ever play baseball. Everyone knows that, uh, you know, right afterwards, he made these, you know, these statements about uh, women not being able to play the game and, and, you know, whatever. So there is that story, but it's, it's one of the 
America is great untold stories, Eric. Absolutely. And that's, now, that's why what do you guys think? It. What do you think? Was it real? Was it rigged? Comment below. We want to hear. Tell us what you think. Have you, have you ever heard of it, too? But, again, tell us if you think it's real, think it's rigged. Whatever it is, it's a fun story. Yeah, by the way, the Yankees won the game 14-4 to in case anybody was worried about their uh, prowess. I don't think the others struck out. Um, but the reality of it is it did happen. There is film footage of it. And um, I think more people in the South are aware of this. People in Tennessee are definitely hip to this story because it was such a big Southern story at the time. Perfect. Well, thanks for bringing Go this Braves. one up. Go Braves. <laughs>